probably a month and a half or however long it's been but listen I have good reasoning I have been kicking butt okay in my first semester of nursing school um, so I'm happy to be able to report that to you guys but as y'all can probably tell by the title I want to actually let y'all know what's been going on give y'all the what is it the download the 411 something like that <laughs> on what the first semester was like with me being in an accelerated ADN program. Okay, I'm gonna try to make this video short and sweet. Like I'm gonna get to the point. I'm gonna try to just get to the point, but I know the video is gonna be at least 15 minutes long. So just hang in there, maybe grab a snack. I don't know, <laughs> but let's go ahead and get into it. So first and foremost, if you're watching this video, you're probably one of my subscribers that is also going through this nursing experience with me at the same time. Either you're already in a nursing program or you just got accepted or we're right what and what about to finish our first level together. So congratulations on that. I wanna congratulate y'all because we need all of the encouragement we can get. So congratulations on that. It's a huge accomplishment. Stay focused and stay encouraged. And now that I have that out of the way, I have my little notes with me because I wanna remember everything. Okay, so first thing I wanna let y'all know is that, like I said, I'm doing well. My grades are great. I have two A, no, I have one A and two Bs, but one of the Bs is really, really low. We'll get into that. Um, <laughs> we'll get into that in a second when I go over grades, but that's how I'm doing. So, you know, I've been able to combat all the surprises that have come at me throughout the semester pretty well, but I do want to let y'all know what the surprises were. It's quite a few. So, okay. So first surprise that happened was, um, me being surprised with the fact that I thought I was going three semesters straight. Like I thought I was doing uh, spring 2023, summer 2023, fall 2023, graduate. But no, I'm not doing the summer semester at all. I'm doing another spring semester. So really what I'm doing is spring 2023 currently, uh, fall 2023, and then spring 2024 and then graduate, okay? That's what my actual thing is. I don't know when they decided to change it, but they did. Um, I found that out early on in the semester. So that threw me for a loop because that affects like where I'm going to live, how much I can work, when I can work, what I can do over the summer, what I can't do over the summer. That's something that you need to know for your program. Know what the actual structure of the program is um, and be prepared for that because that affects your, your real life outside of nursing school. And the next surprise is the learning methods, which it wasn't a surprise because everybody says it's so different, it's so different. But like for me, I'm gonna tell you how exactly it's different so y'all can really know. So for me, I'm used to having professors that profess, that teach, okay? But um, no shade to my current professors if they ever see this, but literally my professors have three hour long lectures, okay? Two and three hour long lectures and like two and three hour long labs. But there's like for the lectures, they they solely read off of a PowerPoint. Like I don't learn that way. So during lecture, I literally just zone out because me listening to someone read bullet points off of a PowerPoint, I, I'm not retaining anything. Okay, so I was expecting to at least have them have a lot of demonstration going on, a lot of videos, a lot of hands-on stuff, even in lecture. I was expecting them to share a lot of their own personal stories, which one of my professors does share her own personal stories, but it's not for every little thing. It's just here and there when she has something to, like extraordinary to tell us, you know? So I was expecting a lot more detail and like, I guess in a way like, um, I don't wanna call it spoon feeding, but just like really letting us know what's up with things and giving us a lot of detail because this is such a serious job or serious career field we're going into. Um, and some people are green. Some people are straight out of high school, uh, just finished their first couple semesters of college. They have no work experience. They have no clinical experience, you know? So I was thinking it would be a little bit more detailed. There's so much more detail in the book. There's so much more detail in YouTube videos. There's so much more detail on nursing videos. Um, that you're not gonna get if you get a slide with five bullet points on it. That's just not enough. There's so much more to consider. There's a lot of nuanced things to know about. So um, I was surprised by that. And then also the last thing I was surprised by is the fact that we have some instructors in our program, which I haven't had them yet, but um, some of them are literally just extremely unreasonable and extremely rude. Like 
this one instructor, I have a story about her later in the video, but she literally, every chance she gets, she's telling me I can't attend clinicals or I'm gonna fail or whatever. Like they're literally so rude and mean. Um, but that's just something I guess to be prepared for because a lot of people say that the nurses or the girls that become nurses are the mean girls from high school. And I'm telling you, at first I wanted to be like, no, you have to be caring and loving and da da da. Couldn't be a mean girl. They're the mean girls from high school, especially the ones that are instructors, because that means they don't want to go to the hospital. They want to teach in a classroom. So they're just trying to stay in their element, I guess. I don't know. But the instructors are crazy. <laughs> Some of the instructors are crazy, okay? And your classmates are going to be the same way. It's like a certain type of girl. It's a, it's a subset of nurses that are that type of girl. I don't know. And I'm specifically saying girl because I have not had this experience with the male nurses that I work with. They are just bare. They're buttholes too, but they're not like mean girl buttholes. They're just buttholes because they're guys and that's just how they act. I don't know. So, but that's the surprises that kind of caught me off guard this semester. You know, I'm getting towards the end now. It's April 11th or 12th. I'm not actually sure. Um, and I finish up on May 8th. My last final, I believe, is on May 8th. Um, so, you know, I've made it through. I'm getting through to the end. But those things did shock me. Um, so let's talk about program structure. So for me, I just told y'all that I'm going uh, spring, fall, spring. Um, that's something that you as a nursing student going into it first semester or moving forward, whatever, you need to know what it's actually going to be structured like because you have to plan around that. Um, and I mean, like, you need to know where might you go for your clinicals? Like, what, like, where is your clinical site? What hospital might you go to? Um, is it close to your home or not? Will you need to budget more for gas because you got to go 20, 30 minutes out the way? You know what I mean? Um, you need to know things like that. And then also, like, what is the ratio of class to clinical hours? Because first semester for me is majority, it's three fourths uh, class time. And we're just now about to go to the hospital in the last month of the first semester. So it's like one fourth clinical time. And um, then next semester in second level, it's like three fourths clinical time and we're rotating different units with you know class time is only one fourth of the time you take your test or whatever but the majority you're in clinicals on different types of units like um labor and delivery a couple weeks then you switch you're gonna go to psych then you switch then you go to pediatrics then you switch then you go to med surge then you switch you know it's different structures okay so know the structure so you can mentally prepare for that preparing and preparation and just being ready is going to help you so much at least like mentally just knowing what you're getting yourself into knowing what you're going into and you can plan okay so that's super important um and yeah, just kind of know, like, <laughs> I hate to say it, but kind of know who's teaching what so you can kind of get used to how they are, their personalities, their um, speaking styles, their lecturing styles, things like that. If you can prepare for that, that's even better so you don't get your feelings hurt. Like, you got to just move past things because they just, they talk to you crazy. I don't know what that's about, but they talk to you like you're five. They talk to you like you're their kid and they're, and, you know, they're going to bully you. Like, they talk to you crazy. So just... Kind of know who's who and what's what and just be, be prepared okay um next thing i want to talk about is my grades i think i told y'all in the beginning of the video i have an a and two b's one of the b's is really low and it's like dangerously low to where it might almost be a c now i've been doing really 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 well to even maintain a's and b's okay so i'm giving myself a pat on the back for that but i will say that that one grade that's almost a c it happened because there was a weekend or a week or something where I just literally did not study. Like I got burnt out towards the middle of the semester, simply just didn't study for that exam that came up. And um, yeah, I didn't, do, I didn't do too hot on it. Everything else, as long as I study and I do my method, which I have a video on, as long as I, um, which I'll link that I guess somewhere here. But um, as long as I study, I do well. But that one, I did not study. I was just burnt out. I was like, no, I'm just going to lollygag and enjoy my time. And I regret it because now I have a low B, which C's get degrees, okay? I understand people go by that, and that's the truth. But when it comes to nursing, like, you don't want to get behind on learning information. You want to get B's and A's so that you know that you know the information. You know that you can answer an RN, you know, nursing question, and you can answer it with, confidence um in yourself and in your skills and in your knowledge so 
I personally don't go by C's Get Degrees because I want to be able to take care of people to the best of my ability. And I would hope that you guys felt the same. So just don't, don't lollygag, stay on top of things. Make sure you make decent grades because at the end of the day, we got people's lives, comfort, mental health, family, all that. We got that in our hands. We're supposed to be helping to improve these things, you know? So, um, yeah, <laughs> that's where I am with my grades. And um, while I'm on the topic of grades, y'all need to make sure y'all read y'all syllabi, syllabuses, syllabuses, and whatever. Because in my program, there is a requirement for your overall grade that you receive there's a requirement for each test grade and there's a requirement for your final exam grades okay there's different requirements for all these things and you need to know what they are because if any one of those things are off you don't pass the class so let me give you an example so we'll just say my fundamentals class this might not be accurate but let me just it's an example okay <laughs> so in fundamentals you need to make at least a 76 percent on each uh exam okay like just your regular exams you have to get at least a 76 on every single one of them or you don't pass your final exam you have to make at least a 70 percent on your final exam or you don't pass and then your overall grade factoring factoring in your final exam your regular exams maybe your group projects uh homework assignments da, 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 da. that final grade has to be something else maybe let's just say 76 percent too that has to be at least 76 percent all these things need to be in order in order for you to pass okay so make sure you read your syllabus so that you know what your requirements are because so many people just skim through it thinking oh it's just like a regular class let me just make my grade at the end make sure i pass on whatever grading scale it is and you're good no that's not how it works you can have straight hundreds make a zero and then you know you come out with an 80 and you're like oh i'm good but no, because you made that zero, you failed the class. You see what I'm saying? So you need to be on top of that so you know what's what, you know what your requirements are. Um, also with that, you need to know um, just general program requirements for graduating because as I'm going through my first semester, I'm realizing there is, well, I already knew it, but I'm just saying other people are realizing that there is a GPA requirement to graduate. So if you already were just barely making it in the program with your GPA and then you go through and make C's, you might not have the program required GPA to actually graduate, to actually receive your degree. Like let's say the program requirement is a to get accepted. Let's say it's a 3.0 and then you go through and you make straight C's, maybe an A here, maybe you know you had to retake something, da 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 da, and then you got a 2.8 excuse me, you ended up passing all your classes, but you have a 2.8 GPA. They will not let you graduate. You have to know your requirements, guys. Like really, as much details as you can get about what you need to do and where you need to be and how you need to do it, get that information and live by it. Know your requirements, live by them, okay? Just get them done, check them off, okay? Um. So, ah, uh, while we're talking about requirements, let me mention the fact that since I'm in first level, I had to do all the medical things to make sure that I met all the medical requirements. I had to get shots, titers, just, I had to get all kinds of things, vaccines, physical exams, all these things. Along the way, I'm thinking I have all these things done because I went to my doctor, I said, here's the list, here's what I need done. But the doctor performed the, the test that they think that my school required, okay? It could have worked just fine for anybody else, but my school wanted a certain thing done, okay? So I turned all my stuff in, and literally just a few weeks ago, the program people at my school were like, hey, this isn't the right test. And I was like, hey, like I, I asked my doctor about it. They said, it's fine. And they're like, yeah, it's fine, but not for us. You need to get this one done and da-da-da-da, or you can't attend clinicals and da-da-da-da. You're going to repeat this semester, da-da-da. You know, they're just being buttholes about it. So I go back to my doctor, get the right ones done. Mind you, all these doctor's visits straight out of my pocket, Okay. I have insurance, so I only had to pay copay, but certain things I had to pay for out of pocket, and it's just like, it, it, it becomes a lot, okay? Oh, that's another thing. You need insurance. I don't know if every program requires that, but my program requires that you have health insurance. I don't know. So, um, yeah, just the medical prep. Make sure when you go to get that stuff done, all the tests, the TB exams, chest x-rays, whatever it is your program requires, make sure you get exactly what your school needs so that there so that there is no room for confusion 
Um, I feel like this video is all over the place, but I'm just saying everything. I don't care. I hope y'all are enjoying it so far. Um, ah, let me tell y'all about some of the setbacks I've had this semester, okay? Surgery, money stuff, work, and moving, okay? <sighs> so within the last couple of weeks, I had terrible wisdom tooth pain. The wisdom tooth pain caused me to miss my pharmacology class on a Thursday so I go th I go Monday through Thursday unless I have an exam in pharmacology then I also go on a Friday so but the typical week is Monday through Thursday so I ended up having to miss a Thursday pharmacology class because I just could not get over the pain I was having in my jaw it literally had my head hurting I couldn't think straight let alone drive to school you know what I mean so I just I called in I went to the doctor got a doctor's excuse and everything because I'm, I'm only allowed to miss two classes oh I keep biting my cheek I'm only allowed to miss two classes either unexcused or excused I feel like they'll be more forgiving if they're excused but I'm only allowed to miss two classes per semester okay that was one of them <laughs> okay I missed it but I got a doctor's excuse and then I found out it was my wisdom tooth and this and that because I thought I had strep throat I had so much going on and it ended up being my wisdom teeth so anyways immediately scheduled to get them out because they were so bad okay um and then the next thursday i had the surgery to get the wisdom teeth out so that's another absence right there i got an excuse but that's two absences right there okay so i was just freaking out thinking like okay they're gonna be so unreasonable they're gonna want to kick me out of the program da, da, da. but i was like listen i have to take care of my body it is what it is and that's just two i haven't gone to three but now like i have no wiggle room i can't miss any more classes okay so um yeah that happened i was super nervous about getting the surgery so like mentally i wasn't in the in the right headspace for school for about a week because i've never been under anesthesia i've never i have so much dental trauma that i was just scared in general um, I didn't know what the healing process was like. I don't like being in a lot of pain. So like all those things were just running through my mind. Like I was just scared. So like for a week, it took me out of the proper headspace to really be successful in school. And then I went and got the surgery done and missed a class. So it was interesting. Um, also money wise, I have not worked at all this semester. I actually, I worked for like two weeks at a hotel. I did the evening shift and it was nice, but it was just so full of drama. Literally, I was like physically assaulted twice by guests and it just wasn't worth it. Like literally trying to balance out the, the, the nonsense of work on top of being like attacked on top of work drama because there's always drama at work like people can't just go to work and be professional i couldn't balance all of that and then come home and study and then go to class for six hours out of the day and then plan this and then plan that. so i ended up stopping work it wasn't even paying that much anyways working at a hotel so i was like okay i wanted to make sure i had a little something coming in but it just wasn't working out and now i'm basic i literally lived off my savings the whole semester so now, you know, that has definitely set me back a lot. I've paid my tuition out of my savings. I've paid for books out of my savings. I've paid for uniforms, gas, groceries, all my regular bills, everything that I've paid for. Car maintenance, straight out of my savings, okay? So this summer, I need to work, baby, okay? So that's been a setback. And like for me, I'm not someone who's ever experienced um, like money insecurity. So like, thank God I was blessed with that type of life. But now it's like, because I decided to go back to school, and I was not able to work for six months plus. It just, it has been interesting. I've been having to be very frugal. I haven't gotten facials, waxes, massages. I haven't had my nails done in the longest. I haven't bought myself anything. I went to the store for the first time in months, like a couple days ago, and it felt foreign to be in a store just to pick up an item. Like, <laughs> I literally have been so frugal, y'all. So it's been interesting. So that, for me personally, affects like my lifestyle. But it's not a huge deal, it's just different, you know what I mean? Um, and as long as I get a job this summer, I'll be okay. But it's just uncomfortable right now, um, which affects, you know. Um, and then lastly, I've been planning to move. Um, I have to move for several reasons, but um, I'm going to move out, go home for the summer, and then come back <laughs> to where my school is and live here for another year. So I just have a lot of planning and stuff that I've had to do. I'm, I'm filming in my kitchen right now because usually I'm in my room, but my room has boxes and everything's packed up. It looks crazy. So that's why I'm in my kitchen. Uh, so those are some of the setbacks. A lot of the setbacks for me have been just like mentally taxing. Like it hasn't been like super, super deep, like 
can't go to school anymore type of setbacks but it's just been things on my mind things i've had to do outside of school that put extra pressure on me but you know if it wasn't these things it'd be something else it's always something else <laughs> so um yeah um last thing i'm gonna say is about advice just a few like advisory things you're going to be reading a lot, so if you can get a stand of some sort to put your laptop or your books on, I'm gonna try to insert a clip of what I have, a laptop stand. If you can get a stand of some sort to put things on so that you can read like this instead of like this, I highly recommend it because reading like this for hours upon hours upon hours hurts your neck so bad, okay, so bad. And just lifting it up a little bit has helped my neck and my back feel so much better. So I recommend that. Um, um, I also recommend not buying everything that's just a trendy nursing thing. Get what you need and go. Get your baseline things, as long as it's cute, as long as you're comfortable in it, um, and call it a day. You don't need every nursing trendy thing ever in the world. Real nurses don't use that. Real nurses have their hair tied up, they've got vomit everywhere, they've got crap everywhere. Like it's all kinds of gross stuff going on. We're not worried about what brand your sneakers are. Okay, that's just how I feel. And I feel like that with everything, but not, you know, just don't be that girl that's like, you need everything trendy from TikTok. Like, save your money. And then also just be ready for those snarky attitudes and vibes. Not everybody's like that. There's plenty of sweet people, plenty, because that's just the nature of nursing. You have to have those people. But there are those snarky people. That being said, if you are in the nursing program, the type of attitude you need to have is the type of attitude of someone that wants to be useful, someone that wants to be helpful. You need to be generally a caring person. You need to be a caring person at your core, okay? Like if you see someone struggling to drink water, do you say, okay, they got it, they're making it happen, okay, we're good. Or do you go over and say, hey, do you need some help with that? Can I help you with that? You know what I mean? Like you need to be attentive, you need to be caring, you need to be considerate, okay? And professional. You're gonna be the most beneficial nurse to someone if you're able to maintain professionalism um and know your stuff obviously and just be a caring person just caring will help you notice things and help people in a way that they need to be helped okay and then um as far as working and money like i said this summer i'm going to be working my butt off i highly recommend to you if there's a semester that you have off or time that you have off get a job Work as many hours as you can, okay? If you have 12 hours worth of energy in your body, go work somewhere for those 12 hours, okay? You need to save up money because during school, it is extremely hard to balance anything with a nursing program, let alone an accelerated program, okay? So make your money while you can, while you're on breaks. Um, hats off to anybody that has kids while they're doing this and no help and then people that work and pay all their own bills and have no help like hats off to you because it is hard it is really hard okay um what else and yeah just stay on top of your stuff like this semester hasn't been terrible for me I feel like it's gone pretty smooth compared to what I was expecting I was expecting it to be a lot worse um but it's going great and I only have like a good two or three weeks left in it and I have a vacation waiting on me at the very end of it and I'm so excited that's something else you need to do Whenever you have time to give yourself a break, finally at the end of each semester, do something for yourself, reward yourself for passing and making it through, okay? Because that's what I'm gonna do. I'm leaving the country. I'm gonna take a break in Central America, okay? But um, that's all I have. That's my recap so far of this semester. This is my level one ADN accelerated program for nursing. Um, if you have anything to add about what you've gone through this semester or about what you might go through in an upcoming semester and you just want to ask me a question whatever of course talk to me in the comments below i respond and like everything um if i don't respond immediately it's because i don't have my phone because i'm studying um <laughs> but i will respond okay um but y'all have a good 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 rest of the semester y'all be easy let me know what other videos y'all want to make blah 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 i gotta study i gotta head to toe check off to pass so um i'm gonna talk to y'all later bye <laughs>